Canva just made interactive pixel art activities way easier to create. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create them using Canva's new AI generator tool. We'll then compare it with the classic Google Sheets method so you can choose what best suits you. So what are pixel art activities? They're visual tasks where students answer questions and then gradually a mystery pixel image appears. They're great for motivating students while enabling them to practice their knowledge recall and skill fluency. Previously, I've used Google Sheets to create this activity. Here's one of the templates that I've created and I'll have a link to the full tutorial and template in the description below. Students would receive a fresh copy of this template and answer the questions. If they get the question correct, then a part of the mystery image will appear. So generally speaking, if you use Google Sheets, then you'd have to create your own questions, answers, and the art manually. Now we have Canva code, Canva's new AI generator. It allows us to create this activity with just prompting. So let's take a look at how it works. In Canva, we would click Canva AI in the left panel. We can then select code for me and we would put in a prompt. For my prompt, I followed an easy prompt structure. So first it would be explaining what the resource is, then assigning the subject, topic and year level. We can then specify the content. So that's the question types. And finally, we can add our own styling, so the appearance and formatting. So here's the prompt that I used. I said, create an interactive pixel art game for year seven students learning algebra. The activity should contain three levels of difficulty and I can specify the content for each of the levels. Alternatively, you can just list the questions that you want to have. Next, I talked about the question type. So I want questions to be numeric input. When students get the right answer, it should automatically move to the next answer. Then I talked about functionality. Then I mentioned including a hint button to help students along. And I said, make the game fun, colorful, and easy to follow. Finally, a little bit about the appearance. So every correct answer reveals just part of the mystery pixel image. And I talked about what kind of images I wanted to have. So students should randomly receive one of the five following pixel art designs and just having different options keeps it a little bit more interesting so that students don't get the same um, art design as the partner next to them. So I said a cat face, smiling robot, wizard, calculator or ramen bowl. And finally, I said there should be no mention of what the pixel art will be. Now Canva code generates a new design every single time. So your design might not come exactly as how mine will, but this at least gives us a bit of a starting point and then you can keep reprompting so it looks exactly how you want it to look. We can then hit submit and Canva will just code away and it might take a couple of minutes to do so. So this is an example of what the pixel art activity can look like. So here students would first choose their year level and they would answer the 15 algebra questions. And I like this bottom part where it gives actual examples of what the questions are going to look like so that students can kind of choose appropriately. Let's take a look at level one, life terms. So we have the pixel art mystery image on the left hand side and the questions on the right hand side, which is quite nice and easy to follow. And you've also got a hint button that students can use. And let's just go ahead and fill out all the questions and see what the mystery pixel art is. Here's the final pixel art image. I think it's of a wizard. I'm not sure, maybe that's part of the mystery. And you can definitely keep prompting to see what kind of other images it can create. But do be aware that Canva's image generation is more on the simple side. So once you're happy with your pixel art activity, you can go ahead and share it. So you would click use in a design. You can then go ahead and add anything you want. So you can add elements and text, and then we can hit publish website. When we click view website, we can see what the website will look like for students. In terms of customizations, the first thing that comes to mind is what the mystery image is going to be. So you can specify something that relates to your subject or topic. Just be aware that the image creation in Canva is quite basic. So I would lean more to kind of simple images. Next, you can customize the content or subject. 
So it could be maths, spelling, science, language, anything you want. Next, you can also have a hint button to help students along. I would also have infinite attempts so that students can try and try again. I'd also recommend having different levels of difficulty so that students can kind of choose which level they're at and just keep practicing. And lastly, you can choose your question type. So you can have text, number, true or false, drag and drop. In my example, I chose to have numeric input so that students need to physically type what they think the answer is instead of just having multiple choice where students can just potentially guess their way through. So let's compare using Google Sheets and Canva code. So the first thing is time required. So for Sheets, I would say it's quite slow. I'd give myself maybe an hour to create it. You'd have to create the questions and then the answers, and then you'd have to create the pixel art and do some conditional formatting. For Canva code, it's quite quick. You just need to do a prompt and probably a couple of reprompts to just fix up little functionality and appearance issues. And then you can just publish the website and send it off. Next is the level of difficulty. So for Google Sheets, I'll say it's a medium because you do need to learn how to use formulas and then learn how to do conditional formatting so that the pixel art appears. And for Canva code, it's easy. You just need to have a go at the prompting. So next is question creation. It's manual for Google Sheets. And for Canva code, it can do auto-generated questions or you can provide a list for Canva as well. Last but not least is image design. So this is what differentiates Google Sheets with Canva code. In Sheets, it's manual, but it's fully customizable and you can have exactly the image that you want to have. The caveat is you have to create it yourself. In my opinion, it is quite fun and therapeutic to create, but it can take some time. With Canva code, the image is automatically generated, but the image is quite random and you're not sure what you're going to get. So it might take a couple times to reprompt to get the image that is close to what you want to have. So that's a lot of information. So let's just summarize this. When should you use Google Sheets? Use Google Sheets if you want to have your custom pixel image exactly how you want it to be. Additionally, it's great if you want to have offline access or file exports. So you can actually download your Google Sheets template for students and have them work offline just in an Excel document. They can then go ahead and just submit that document so you can see how they went. And when should you use Canva code? Use Canva code if you want to quickly create the activity and be able to repurpose it with ease. If you use Canva code, you can quickly change the topic, the subject, the art image, or the levels of difficulty just with a little bit of prompting. It makes the activity a little bit more versatile. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and press the subscribe button. And if you want more tips on creating interactive games or activities using Canva code, I have a free guide in the description below, or you can check out this video on five interactive games that you can create using Canva code. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments below whether you would use Canva code or Google Sheets to create your pixel art activity.